Cocooned in a fragile shell of atmosphere, planet Earth rotates serenely on its axis like a blue and white jewel. Home to as many as 100 million different species and the cradle of humanity, our unique planet is dominated by the oceans from which life first emerged. Arthur C. Clarke said we should have called the planet Ocean rather than Earth. And from space, it is easy to see why. Our journey begins with the smallest step of all. And already the Earth is a distant presence. Moving at the speed of light, which travels 186,000 miles a second, we would reach our nearest neighbor in a mere 1.3 seconds. The Moon is huge for satellite, and at a quarter the size of Earth, compared to its parent planet, it is the largest satellite in the solar system. Ahead of us lie the other terrestrial worlds of the inner solar system, formed over four billion years ago from rocky debris orbiting the newly born sun. Beyond them, we will visit the giants of the outer solar system with their fleets of accompanying moons before plunging into interstellar space and embarking on the longest voyage of all, a journey that will take us back to the dawn of time and the Big Bang itself across 13.4 billion light years.
Beyond the asteroid belt lies the realm of the giants. Four gargantuan worlds composed of gas or ice inhabit the outer solar system, all dwarfing the Earth and the rocky inner planets. Mighty Jupiter is the first of the outer worlds, a planet so vast its mass and volume are greater than all the other planets combined. It has often been described as a failed star. Like the Sun, Jupiter is predominantly made up of hydrogen, but it would need to be 80 times more massive to begin the hydrogen fusion process that powers the stars. The second largest planet in the solar system, Saturn is also the most insubstantial. It is the only planet less dense than water. In the unlikely event of a large enough ocean being found, Saturn would float in it. The tiny moon of Enceladus is one of the solar system's most intriguing worlds. Trapped in a gravitational tug of war between Saturn and several of the larger outer satellites, Enceladus is pulled this way and that. As the moon's shape is distorted, heat is generated, melting ice and giving rise to liquid water running just a few meters beneath the surface. Cracks in the ice allow plumes of material to boil into space, settling back on the surface as light snow. With water so close to the surface, could Enceladus play host to primitive life? Thank <laughs> you.